Hey everyone, it's Evan, and welcome to America Reads Fun Learning Activities. Our activities focus on subjects such as science, history, health, and even arts. This week we're going to learn about black history, but first let's guess what we're going to learn about. For our first vocab word, we have a computer, which is an electronic device for processing and storing data. Next we have ROM, which means read-only memory, and it's a flash memory chip that contains a small amount of non-volatile memory, which means its memory cannot be changed. Now let's talk about a ROM cartridge, which is something I have here. You might have seen, you might have seen a ROM cartridge in your favorite game console. A ROM cartridge is a removable memory card designed to be inserted into a game console. And let's talk about a microprocessor, which is something that I have here, where I put, hello and welcome to America Reads on it. And this is an integrated circuit that contains all the functions of a central processing unit of a computer. Now did you guess what we're going to learn today? That's right, we're going to learn about video games and more specifically Jerry Lawson, who is the inventor of the video game cartridge, which has been revolutionary to the world. But now, let's jump to Laura and see their amazing activity for this week. Hey you guys, welcome to today's activity. So for today's activity, we're going to be creating our own game boards. And to start off, we're going to go over the list of materials that you will need in order to create this game board. To start off, we're going to need some construction paper. And this can be any other type of construction paper. If you want to make it um, the colorful ones, like the pink, blue, all loud construction boards, definitely do so but for now we're just going to use this version of a construction board it just has some glitter around it to make it look more fun and then the other material you will need is a glue stick some rolling dices either two or one is fine and then we're going to need some game toy pieces so that way you can choose who's going to be the red card who's going to be the blue card and then we're gonna need some post-it notes. And I chose some colorful ones to make it look more fun for the game board. But um, I will show you guys how to use this into the activity as we go along the video. And then the final material you will need is some markers. Okay, you guys. So now to start off with the activity, we're going to be separating our three different pieces of post-it notes. So as you can see, I have the pink, the blue, and the green ones. So I'm going to just kind of start setting up my materials. So here's the markers. We're going to be taking some random colors out. Whichever you choose, you know, it's all up to you. Whatever color you want to use to draw and color with and just create your own board game pieces. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to start off by writing out the word start on one of our post-it notes. So as you can see here, I chose the pink post-it note to write out start. So that way when we do begin playing our game on our game board, the, all the players know where to start and begin the game on. And then we're going to grab the glue stick and then we're just going to be gluing the back of the post-it note so that way it, we can make sure that it does actually stick on the whiteboard, white construction board. So you just want to make sure that it does stick on to the construction board. And then I'm going to be grabbing the next color post-it note, the blue one. And then for this one, I'm just going to leave it blank for right now. We can always decorate it and write on top of it later. I just want to make sure that I have all of the post-it notes glued onto the construction board so that way we don't have to worry about it later on. And then the same thing with the green post-it note, we're going to take that one, glue the back of it with the glue stick, and then make sure it does actually stick onto the construction board. And the nice thing about this construction board is that even if you do make a little mistake, like accidentally putting some glue, just like how I did right here, <laughs> you can see I'm trying to wipe it off. I like this construction board because it easily takes out all the glue sticks, so nothing really sticks onto it, so you can easily clean up any mess.
So with this other pink note, we are going to create another fun rule that I just created right now. So I decided that since we put skip a turn on the other pink note, we can actually put roll again on this pink post-it note to make it much more interesting. And let me just remind you guys again that at the end of the day, this is your game board. So however you want to create it, if you want to make your own rules, if you want to add something else that you think is going to be much more fun when you play it with your friends and family, go ahead, go out for it. At the end of the day, this is your game board piece. So if you want to personalize it to however you feel like it'll just be more fun for you and your friends, just by all means, go for it. And just make sure you guys have a good time, have fun, and be creative with it. So for the set of rows, what I did was that I chose four different post-it notes to count off as one row. And then the next row is gonna be another four different colored versions of post-it notes. But the amount of post-it notes that you would like to use is honestly up to you. But for me, I just used whatever would fit up on the whiteboard. So if you have more space on your construction board, definitely go ahead and use more post-it notes. It's all up to you. But for this one, I just started off with different rows having four pieces of post-it notes. So as I mentioned before, this is where we're going to kind of create like a little bridge that's separated away from the first two set of rows of the post-it um, colored post-it notes. So as you see here, we're going to just kind of separate um, the other row so it looks a little different. And then after we separate them, then we'll start adding up two new rows on the opposite side of the construction board as you're going to see right now. Right now I'm just kind of setting everything up. And obviously remember you guys, the post-it notes, even if they're a little crooked, don't worry. Nothing needs to be perfect as long as we're having fun, right? And so as you can see here, I wrote another fun, different rule. It says run in circles three times. So for this one, I thought it'd be a little bit more fun just because since we're going to be sitting down for such a long time, sometimes I can get a little bit boring. So it's kind of fun to throw in some random fun motor rules so that gets you kind of to get up and perform the action. And it's, it's just a little bit different, you know, compared to the other rules that we have, such as rolling again or skipping a turn. Those are pretty normal rules for most game board pieces. So it's just kind of fun to be creative with it, you guys. So right after we paste the pink post-it note, what I was thinking was that we can just create one more row of colorful post-it notes. And then after that row, we can kind of do something a little bit different. So that way there's not just rows and rows after of just colorful post-it notes. Um, I was thinking of kind of doing something a little bit different as you will see more into the activity. So another rule that I just came up with was that since we were kind of near the end of finishing up our game board pieces, especially with um, pasting on the post-it notes onto the construction board, I thought it would make the game a little bit more interesting if we added a fun rule where if you landed on the pink post-it note, you would get to actually move up two places. But if you don't land on the pink post-it note, well then you'll just have to kind of take the long way the long version of finishing up the game but I thought it would just make the game a little bit more interesting since we're actually near the end of the game so just an idea for you guys whenever you're creating your game board pieces and setting up your rules oh yeah you guys we're gonna finish up by writing off our last post-it note so remember you guys, after we finish up pasting this green post-it note onto, onto our construction board, we can actually go back and decorate the ones that are empty. So we're going to actually add some numbers, maybe add a new rule, we will see. But first let's finish up by writing on top of this last green post-it note. And make sure that you actually write something where it says, oh, end of the game, or oh, congratulations, you won. So that way it's easier for the player to know where it starts and where it ends on your game board. 
also I wanted to mention that this game board piece is actually a pretty fun idea to make especially since we're all at home right now and as you can see I have my three-year-old brother at home with me and so the person who's throwing dices into the camera is him so after I finish um, creating our game board I'm actually gonna kind of have him sit down and play with me so we can kind of test out this game version that I made So now that we get to kind of go back and decorate and add some more rules and numbers to our game board, I'm actually going to add a little shortcut to our game board activity. So that way it makes the game a little bit more fun and interesting for the players. So if you do end up landing on the blue post-it note, you actually have the option to kind of climb down the ladder onto the green post-it note where it says run in circles three times so all you have to do is just perform that new rule but at least you're much more closer to finishing the game and winning Now that we're done finishing up our shortcut, now we're going to actually add some numbers to the post-it note so that way you know which number you have to land on. So we know that at the start, pink one, that's actually number one. And the next one is going to be number two on the blue post-it note and then number three on the green one. And then where it says skip a turn, it's still a number you guys, so remember that that one's going to be four, then the next one's going to be five. So just make sure that you're following in order with your numbers. Obviously, if you want to make this a type of math or multiplication type of game board, go ahead and be creative. But for this one, I'm just going to make it kind of simple and basic. So we're just going to kind of do one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is going to lead us all the way to the number 18, where it says, congratulations, you won. All right. Last but not least, let's add a title to our game board piece. So for this one, since I made it up on the go and I was kind of random and just creative with it, I wrote my own name down as Laura's Game Board. But of course, if you want to put your own name or a different random name, it's all up to you, honestly. This is a game board that you created. I just hope you guys had fun and were creative with it. And I hope you guys actually made your own rules up. It would be really cool to see what you guys came up with. Okay, you guys, I hope you had so much fun making this game board activity with me. Honestly, it was really fun. But I also wanted to mention one important thing is that however you want to make your game board, if you want to create your own rules and your own format on how you want to place these post-it notes, it's all up to you. Go ahead. Honestly, just have fun with it and be creative and just do something where it's going to be fun and enjoyable to play with other people and your friends. Anyways. I hope you guys had so much fun. Now let's move on to Evan with the reflection. I hope you guys enjoyed that activity and made a cool game. You guys have probably all played video games before, you know, such as this on a cartridge or on a CD. But these video games would have never been invented without Jerry Lawson, who was an electronic engineer back in the 1970s. And in the 1970s, he worked on the first ever game cartridge console, which was the Fairchild Channel F which was the first ever console where you could take your game and you could have a bunch of different ones. You'd pick it up, you put it in the console, and you might be wondering what they do before this. Well, before this, they'd have things such as this, which would be, it would be a game console, but on the game console, you only had one game. So every time you plugged it in, played it, you were playing the same game. You know, imagine you had a game console, all you could play was tic-tac-toe, and then you'd have another one that had a different type of game on it. That's what it used to be back then. All they had was a console for each individual game. But then Jerry Lawson came around and he completely changed everything when he said, hey, let's put games on here and then we can insert them to where the computer, their microprocessor would just read it and then it would run those codes. And today game cartridges are still used they're used widely. You might see DVDs a lot more now, but game cartridges are still used. Game cartridges are everywhere. Here's one right here. This is a brand new console, not that old. So his invention has transcended truly everything. It's everywhere still. And we have Jerry Lawson to thank for that. 
So he's a big part of black history to me because I'm an electrical engineer and I see what he did as revolutionary. It was awesome. But what I have to say is thank you for learning with us and I hope you come back and learn some more. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell button so you know when we upload our next video and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.